Wow, I didn't realize how big this! Holy sh! It's that like shearing force I feel peels them off. It's actually like parasitic Kobe pods. You'll lose the fish from ammonia. Take any GFO. Excellent test! All right, so we just got a new batch of clams in. We're gonna get them from the front, bring them downstairs, and get them acclimated into their quarantine tank. It's clam time again at Polo Reef, and they continue their mission to perfect the process of keeping and caring for these delicate beauties. A new shipment just arrived, and these clams, they're not ordinary. As the team unpacks them, they get a huge surprise. There's one non-clam. Oh my, big clam. This one's beautiful. These two are beautiful. Polo Reef has seen its fair share of clams in its day, but these, they're nothing like they've seen before. Andrew's in for the shock of a lifetime as he comes to take a look. How big this, holy sh! Look at the size of this Cormosa! Holy smokes! Okay, buddy, she's very great. Yeah. Gorgeous. She is gorgeous indeed. Wow, look at some nice sized clams. I wonder which ones are our apple culture and which ones are wild. You might know by now, but Andrew, he's a visionary. As soon as he sees the clams, he gets excited and formulates a plan for these new beautiful arrivals. He immediately begins to think about lighting. I want to check the spectrum that I set on this stuff. Do we have a par reading in there? In case you missed it, Polar Reef has been on the clam journey for some time now. Keeping clams is extremely difficult, and Andrew, he's on a mission to perfect it. You can check out our previous clam videos with the links in the description below. I'm excited. We think we are on to something that we're going to discuss later. And I want to now talk to you a little bit about clam lighting, specifically what we're doing with the PAR measurements, lighting intensity, and spectrum. Andrew and Patty get right to work. She quickly grabs a PAR meter, and Andrew opens up an app to start changing the lighting up. Taking up reds and greens, a little more full spectrum for the clams. I bet you're perfect right now. That's going to be not be the highest spot. It's right in between, 330. Yeah, those are good. One, uh, they come from a usually shallower environment where you get a more broadband light to the clam, including the greens, the reds, and the blues and ultraviolets, etc., in a more even pattern than, let's say, a deeper water coral where they'll get more blues and less whites. But you also want to understand where the clam came from and what light they grew it under. So we have a delicate balancing act where we're trying to increase the broad spectrum of lighting. And I say broad, I mean more than blue violet. All these clams have been in bags and you can't go and shock them and bring them right back to normal conditions. That's great, 300, yeah. Whole area, yeah. Whole area is good. Yeah. You see the front over there? 200 there, that's fine. For a scamosa, that's fine. The whole clam subject is fascinating to me. First, they're beautiful creatures and, and very simple filter feeders, photosynthetic, and come in all different colors, uh, almost like snowflakes where two are never the same, but they're extremely difficult. At Polo, we've seen significant deaths, particularly in wild clams, as opposed to maricultured clams. Mariculture where they've grown up and has, they've never seen the ocean, where wilds come in with pests, bacteria, can't adjust to our lighting. We have found pathogens, but we have not perfected the dip or bath the antibiotic or protozoa to stop the spread of these things. So we got to start them low anyway and raise them carefully. Quick science lesson for you all, just on background of lighting spectrum. The deeper you go down in depth in the ocean, you lose different kind of lights with different penetration. So your reds, you'll lose first, maybe within the first 10 to 20, 30 feet. Yellows and oranges next. Then the greens go down pretty far, but the blues and violets travel the longest distance. So 
Corals that are in deeper water will have more blue-violet, and things that are in shallower water will have more of that full rainbow spectrum. I hope that explains clam lighting for you. We're still learning, we're still figuring it out. Dr. Alex takes scrapes and sends them to the labs. We find bacterial, we find parasitic. One day, Polar Reef will figure it out. What do you guys think, by the way, between the maricultured and wilds? Have you had success keeping wilds? Have you had success keeping them together? Have you ever had clam deaths mysteriously out of nowhere where they start going down like bowling pins after three to six months or even a year or two? Comment below, we'd love to hear from you. Not all clams are created equal. And at this point, Andrew, he's a bit of an expert. The squamosa is like a derasa. It doesn't need to go on a rock. It can go on the platform. It doesn't need a rock to attach to. But the maxim is, or crocias should go on the rock. You, you can take these scrolls, okay? All these scrolls and move them all. In the dark area. In, yeah, okay? And you can put these scormosas on the platform. No, not the rock. Not on the rock, just straight up. The rocks should be the maximums and, 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 and the, the teardrops. The clams are ready to be acclimated and Max is right there to put them through the process. Just like acclimating a fish or coral, Max uses the same techniques to keep the clams happy. All right, so we're gonna start acclimating the clams, get them all situated with their salinity, pH, temperature. Clams are very difficult to keep, and Andrew is determined to figure out a method that works best. He turns his attention to something different. He believed that some of the previous clams haven't survived due to some GFO particles stirring loose from the reactor. Joe gets to work creating a DIY GFO filter to trap the particles and stop them from entering the tank. It's a simple setup that will hopefully prove effective. We've been thinking that there's a shot that some of these clam problems that we've been having, along with the other tank right next door to the clam tank, uh, some bacterial infections in corals, could all be traced back to something that we've been noticing in the tank more. And what it is, is a red iron-based filter media called GFO. It stands for granular ferric oxide. It is an iron-based compound used in the water aquaculture industry to absorb phosphates and actually uh, toxins in water. It's iron-based, like we said. And because of that, water needs to flow through it. It sucks up uh, water and phosphates absorb to it. If you run it with too much turbulence, it is a red iron color. And the powder and that color can start getting on things and interfering with things. And we noticed it in our skimmer cups. We noticed it when we took the bag that actually the pipe runs into, there was red stuff coming out of the bag and we were filtering it still. So we of course doubled the bag, but that's for the next episode. This red stuff can accumulate and is not particularly good for corals. It has to be an irritant. It has to have been contributing to some of our clam death because the clam tank and the other 300 gallon coral tank are the first tanks that come from the sump where the GFO is into the system. Coincidence? I don't think so. This GFO is pretty strong stuff and normal aquariums may use a cup or less and people are very careful with the amount they use. In this tank, that wouldn't do anything. Did you know we actually use 12 buckets of GFO? These are two and a half gallon buckets, so it's over 30 pounds of GFO stacked up in a reactor. And that's changed monthly. By the way, that filter Joe made is doing a terrific job. Between that and slowing the flow down, I hope we get to the root cause of this clam and bacterial infection we've had in some of these corals. For all you reefing guys out there and people in the hobby, what's your experience with GFO? Some people hate it. Some people think you can bleach out corals. Some people think it can strip things and phosphates too quickly. Actually size 
plays an advantage in this particular tank for us as we don't see the swings with the GFO because of the water volume. But we'd like to hear your opinion. GFO or not? Take it away, Joe. So basically, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to take this tank and we're going to make a hole, you know, on the side of this little, you know, black storage container. Basically, you could get this from Home Depot or anywhere. And we're going to put a bulkhead. The trick is that what we don't want to do is we don't want to put it completely at the bottom because what we want to do is we want to allow the sock to be in the water before it goes out. Why is that? So this way, the same water in the sump is keeping water in the sock. So the particulates are not forced out of the sock if they're falling into the sock only and then draining out of the sock. So we want to try to create some back pressure in the sock. We didn't know if it's going to work or not, but it seems like it's working. Let's go back and let's see how we did it. So here we are, guys. This is what we had here, right? So as you can see, these seems to be the two pipes that basically are supplying from the system from the 17 tank. We wanted to basically redirect them into this container, which is, I'm going to call it an inline sump. As you can see, the water, the pipes go up into the box, the pipe goes up into the box. You also see that I have two valves so we can control the intake and outtake. And then basically that's the bunk that I was saying where it comes and it goes back into the tank. And inside of there, we have a hanging sock that the water is going straight into the sock and collecting any remnants of GFOs or whatever you're using at home. I have to say, this is the simplest do it yourself in line song to collect anything that you could be suspicious of. Andrew was suspicious of Roa escaping and he was right. It is escaping. And this is how we are collecting it and making our tanks with Roa free particulates you know, surrounding our, whatever it is, if it's corals, clams, and I don't know what, if it does anything bad to anything, but why should you have Roa flat floating around in your tank? And it seems that it's working because we've noticed clams are happier. Water is more, you know, clear. Um, so there you have it. Meanwhile, back in the lab, the clams are all acclimated and ready to be placed into quarantine. Max starts putting them in one by one. It's important to handle these clams with care. The quarantine process is the beginning of the journey for these beauties. Proper placement in the quarantine for flow and lighting can make or break how well these clams do. During the past few weeks, the Polo team has been hard at work constructing the newest addition to the lab, the six experimental cube tanks. The installation has been going well, and Andrew pops in for a quick update on the filtration. So we just set these cubes up for experiments and it's connected to a sump. The sump has cycled matrix and live rock in there. Don't forget your biological and have that prepared when you set up a quarantine. If not, you're gonna have ammonia building up on you all the time. You'll lose the fish from ammonia. Back by the clam tank, Andrew and the team stop by to check on how well the DIY GFO filter is doing. It was either this or to do something downstairs and plumb it with like an ocean clear Pleaty cartridge, but this is temporarily, this is exactly what we need. Uh, excellent test. Sometimes this hobby requires some thinking outside the box. Today, the team continued their clam journey and put their minds together to do what Polo Reef does best, adapt. Only time will tell if the DIY GFO filter is a success. And the only way to find out is by following us on the journey. Hit that like, subscribe, and bell button to stay updated on everything Polo Reef. Until next time. Yeah, I know, it's a problem. A big filter sock. I don't think you can go up. Take a look real close. Wow.